I'm going to give the presentation back to Cindy and just uh, present her status back to Cindy. And it's my pleasure to introduce to you my friend Cindy Farley. Cindy and I, have, this is the sixth presentation with Cindy and her students, her midwifery students from Georgetown University. So six years in a row and I've had the pleasure of working with them every time. It's been fantastic. Um, it's uh, the students are Christy Cannon, Charlie Coffey, Lauren Radney, Raven Fulton, and Anna Dykstra. And I will leave Cindy to do the rest of the invitation or the rest of the uh, introductions. But thank you for joining us. And thank you, Lorraine. Always great to be here with you. Um, my Georgetown midwifery students are going to share how the COVID-19 global pandemic has influenced their professional and personal experiences while they were also engaged in the challenging work of learning to become excellent midwives. It is important for each of us to reflect on our individual and collective journeys through the pandemic from its beginning through its evolution and with the understanding that it is really not over yet. Birth equity is the theme of this year's conference. The COVID crisis has brought into sharp focus the inequities in healthcare access, resources, and outcomes within our country and across the globe. We must do better. Hi, I'm Cindy Farley, Associate Professor at Georgetown University in the midwifery and women's health nurse practitioner programs. I teach labor, birth, postpartum, and newborn care, and I'm involved in other professional activities, such as clinical care, writing, legal consultations, and advocacy work. Since COVID vaccines have become available, I have been volunteering at vaccination clinics in my community. It is all too easy to hear about something happening halfway across the world and feel empathy, but also a sense that it does not really affect me directly. And so it was for many of us early in the days of the pandemic as we watched Wuhan, China identify and deal with this novel virus. One effect of the pandemic for me was the cancellation of the International Confederation of Midwives Conference. This was to be in uh, Bali, Indonesia in 2020, and we watched as the virus made its way there. I was planning to attend this very powerful and inspiring gathering of midwives. It is now rescheduled as a virtual conference for every Wednesday this June, so I do encourage you all to consider attending. In early March 2020, some United States birth facilities began suspending students from their clinical placements. This was followed in mid-March 2020 by a Georgetown University policy to suspend all clinical students and was simil similar to policy enacted by many universities during this time. Because Georgetown is a hybrid distance program, we already did many things in the remote environment, but we had to quickly take our three-day on-campus simulation intensive courses to the online environment. We were able to create innovative role play and low fidelity simulation in a virtual learning environment to continue student engagement during clinical suspension. At stake in the US and around the world is the delay of a year's worth of newly graduated midwives. At a time of need for more healthcare workers, students were delayed in completing program competencies and in joining the workforce. In the US, this was estimated to be about 1,200 students based on new midwife student enroll enrollments in the year 2018. These students were projected to graduate in 2020, and some are just now completing their studies. As faculty, it is important to hear and honor our students' experiences and understand how we all can best support each other through this time. 
We believe that students being born into midwifery during this time will have developed a unique skill set of resiliency and flexibility under rapidly changing circumstances. This will serve them well as they complete their programs of study and join the midwifery workforce to provide excellent midwifery care to those who need our services. To our live audience, we are curious as to your experiences during the COVID-19 pandemic. So if you're willing to share, then please um, type into the chat box anything um, that you would like us to know. Uh, and perhaps we'll have time at the end to discuss. I do want to proudly note the um, previous Georgetown Student Cafes we have done. And these are archived at the VIDM website if you are interested in that. I will now hand over our talk to our midwife student panelists and they will share their stories. First up is Christy Cannon and happy International Day of the Midwife. Hello, my name is Christy Cannon and I live in Thousand Oaks, California with my husband, Quinn, and our five beautiful children, Elizabeth and Mary, 15-year-old twins, Camilla, who is 12, Thomas, who is 10, and James, who is four. I have worked as a registered nurse in neonatal intensive care for 22 years and have loved this chosen path. I'm grateful for all the lessons I have learned over the years working with families in maternal child health. My NICU career helped prepare me for my own twins who were born prematurely and are unique in that one has Down syndrome and many health issues related to that diagnosis, such as severe sleep apnea, celiac disease, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, and a congenital heart defect that was repaired with open heart surgery. Although our journey with Mary has been challenging, she has been our greatest teacher and is truly the heart of our family. She brings us joy every day. We are thankful she has introduced us to the wonderful Down syndrome community and changed our lives for the better. I have been able to care for many babies with Down syndrome in the NICU and be a resource for those families, which has been a highlight of my nursing career and one I hope continues on my journey as a midwife. In January of 2020, we received the unexpected news that my 38-year-old sister-in-law, Candace, a vibrant, beautiful mother of four, had undergone complications during, during a routine cardiac procedure that left her with a few days to survive on ECMO in the ICU. We immediately flew to Utah to say goodbye to her. The following week, our family drove out to attend her funeral. We were devastated and struggled to manage the grief of losing a loved one. I had just started my fifth term at Georgetown University, which proved to be the most difficult, and quickly got behind in my studies. I struggled to keep up with my schoolwork and had difficulty focusing those first few weeks following her death. When the world shut down in March, I was already fragile with the grief process and things quickly began to unravel. All five of my children were suddenly home trying to learn remotely and I was left managing the task. Soon I lost my village and was left with all the responsibilities of caring for the children, cooking the meals, meeting the special needs of my daughter with Down syndrome and wearing the hat of teacher to all my children. Mary's private nurse and our nanny both left so we were on our own to figure out this new way of life. As a result, I fell further behind in my studies, which was very stressful. I worked closely with my professors at Georgetown for extensions and tried to study while the kids were sleeping. It took a toll on my health and I got sick for the month of April. I had two negative COVID tests, despite having all the typical symptoms of the virus. Things were not looking good. My husband work, was working remotely from home and trying his best to help with the children and family responsibilities. I ended up taking a leave of absence at work and pushed through the term. 
It was one of the most difficult periods of my life and I felt overwhelmed with responsibility. I had to stop my clinical at the Natural Birth Center in March and was not able to resume, resume for nearly 11 months due to the inability to find a preceptor. During this time, I tried to stay positive, focus on my studies and take advantage of all the simulation activities available to maximize my learning as a student midwife. Georgetown was great about adding virtual opportunities, including mock on-call experiences, simulation clinical scenarios, and many other options to learn virtually in a COVID-friendly way. In February of this year, I was finally able to resume clinical and begin my long-awaited intrapartum experience in a hospital setting. I have now experienced 16 beautiful births, which I will never forget. Unfortunately, my contract recently ended and I'm back to waiting for another clinical site. Due to the difficulty of securing a preceptor in my area, my husband and I decided that we would cast the net far and wide, reframing this next phase of my clinical as a family experience. We are hoping to relocate with our children over the summer to complete my clinical requirements anywhere in the United States. We are excited about potential options and look forward to this adventure. I feel fortunate that I was among the first few to receive the vaccine in California last December. A feeling of gratitude and relief washed over me as I walked into that room and I couldn't hold back the tears. I thought, finally, we have something to fight back after so much loss and devastation. I felt deeply humble and grateful to the scientists who made this possible. I sensed a beginning to the end. As the pandemic evolved, it was difficult to watch my children struggle with isolation. They stopped dancing, playing sports, and spending time with their friends. They grew quiet. We had to find other ways to bring joy and combat the depression that settled in unexpected ways. New challenges arose, so we reached out for help. We found new ways to connect with others during quarantine and relied on each other for support. We called grandparents more often, during, more often and started regular extended family Zoom meetings. We took it one day at a time, remembering this wouldn't last forever. Although this past year has been difficult for all of us, there were silver linings. We slowed our life down and spent more time together. We had family dinner around the table every night. We learned how to make our own bread with our own sourdough starter. We found ways to serve others. We were grateful for our good health and although life had changed dramatically, we were living and breathing and getting through the pandemic. Although my journey to become a midwife has taken some unexpected paths and graduation has been delayed due to COVID, I have hope that one day I will reach my goal of working as a certified nurse midwife. I will bring more babies into the world and consider that a great honor. I felt called to this profession in a profound way and know I'm supposed to be here with all of you. Thank you and happy International Day of the Midwife. Hey everyone, my name is Charlie Coffey. I currently live in Cumming, Georgia, where I've been a labor and delivery nurse at Northside for about four years now. Um, I'm anticipated to graduate um, this summer, which was a little bit delayed due to COVID, but, um, and I will be a women's health nurse practitioner and a certified nurse midwife. And I know all of us um, prepared ourselves for graduate school, but definitely never anticipated going through graduate school during a pandemic. <laughs> I continued to work full-time as a labor and delivery nurse through school, and when the pandemic hit, we had the constant changes here of protocols, of what we had to wear, who was allowed on the unit, which then, of course, you know, us as nurses had to deal with, but also struggled with, with the patients and explaining everything new to them, which was changing daily. And at this time, I was in a clinic doing my uh, rotation, and I remember one night after getting home from the clinic, and this was when COVID was kind of starting to really build up and especially Georgia had been a hot spot for it. Um, I got a text from my preceptor at the time saying that they were no longer allowing students. 
And so I messaged um, the school and I was concerned. And it wasn't long after that, that Georgetown had stopped clinicals as well. And I think I can speak for all of us when I say how nervous I was. Um, I'm very much a type A and a planner. So it was very hard to deal with such a large unknown and knowing that there was really no one who had the answers to what was going to happen next. Um, but we continued through didactic and I saw light at the end of the tunnel when uh, the clinical started opening back up for the fall semester. And I do have to brag on the placement team at Georgetown because, like I said, Georgia was such a hot spot for COVID and they were pretty strict on who was allowed to be where and do what. And a couple of weeks before the fall semester, I got word that I could return to clinical. And the first day I had an amazing day with my preceptor, learned a lot, and it felt really good to get some hands-on skills back. The next day I had a class. And I remember in the middle of class, my preceptor texted me that she had just tested positive for COVID. And of course, at that point, I started overanalyzing everything I was feeling and, you know, any symptoms that I might have. And by the next day when I was supposed to get tested, I knew that morning when I woke up that I had it. So we both struggled uh, for two weeks. It hit us both fairly hard. And of course, we sat out for clinical, which then just led to further frustrations of, you know, being set back even more, but it certainly gave us a greater respect, not only for COVID, but also for our patients who had gone through this as well and gone through it while they are pregnant. Um, we got back on track, which of course came with, again, daily changes in protocol, restrictions and rising numbers here, but I really think it gave me an even greater respect for this career that we had chosen which honestly I didn't think was possible at the time. But I've watched coworkers and classmates and preceptors and professors just navigate through something that nobody was prepared for um, as professionals, but also deal with it on a personal level too. And Christy, I have to say thank you so much for sharing your story because it's absolutely beautiful. But I just wanted to um, thank you all for having me and happy International Day of the Midwife. Hi, my name's Anna Dykstra, and <clears throat> I have a bit of a cold, so I'm sorry my voice sounds a little funny today. I live in Spearfish, South Dakota in the U.S. Um, South Dakota is on the Great Plains in the middle of the country, and it's very rural here. I'm going to be talking today about COVID's impact on my personal life, my learning as a student midwife, and my clinical experiences. And of course, these are all intertwined, so they're not going to be in any certain order. When I first heard about COVID, I didn't really know what to expect. I have a nursing background in public health, um, and I thought that our public health system in the U.S. would do a good job of, of protecting us. Unfortunately, things kind of um, exploded and got out of hand, as you guys all know. But I really didn't expect to still be dealing with COVID over a year later. Um, when things started to get bad in the United States, I first wondered if I should stop graduate school and go back to being a nurse in order to be more helpful during this pandemic. Um, and I think other students may have felt similarly, but our faculty assured us that we were doing the right thing by educating ourselves and we were all encouraged to continue on in our programs. When COVID became widespread in the United States, I was in my third out of seven terms of midwifery school. I remember that it felt like everything got turned upside down in a matter of one week. In um, Georgetown, in our Georgetown program, we're required to travel to campus three times for intensive hands-on trainings. And my first one of these was scheduled to happen in April of 2020. So of course this was canceled and moved online. And then, and so that happened. And then right after that happened, I started hearing on the news about medical schools throughout the country removing their students from their clinical sites due to COVID. And I wondered if Georgetown might do the same thing. I was supposed to start my clinical rotations in May of 2020. And shortly after I heard about these other schools doing that, I heard that Georgetown students, like Charlie mentioned, were being um, sent home from their clinical sites as well. 
So um, no one knew at that point when we would be able to start our rotations. Um, summer term for myself was suspended for all, for all students. At that point, it was suspended. And so I didn't know when I'd be able to start a rotation and therefore I didn't know when I'd be able to graduate. And this gave me a lot of anxiety. <laughs> um, now, there were of course personal things going on for me at the same time as all of this. I have uh, an eight-year-old son and a five-year-old daughter who then of course were seven and four last year when all of this was happening. My son was in first grade and his school closed for COVID precautions in March. And so the last two and a half months of his year were expected to be completed online and as activities with a caregiver. He does not particularly like sitting in front of a computer, so that was challenging. Um, my husband works full-time outside the home as a, he's a self-employed carpenter and a ceramics artist, so his work did continue, but because it was outside of the home, the responsibility of educating my son fell solely on me since I was home already for grad school. I'm not currently working as a nurse while I'm in grad school, but um, then was educating my son. So there were a few hours per day of activities for him. And my daughter's preschool daycare also closed for COVID at that time. So I was then homeschooling my son while also trying to keep my active four-year-old busy and trying to fit in my own studies. Um, I was unfortunately not able to fulfill all of the activities my son's school was asking me to complete, even though I was doing the best I could. And at the end of the school year, my son's teacher contacted me and said they'd have to report that my son did not receive adequate education the last two months of his year because I was unable to complete all of the activities with him. And his teacher was very understanding, didn't fault me for this at all, but I cried on the phone with her because education for my children is very important to me. So that was difficult. Um, Georgetown then did start to allow students to return to and begin clinical rotations again in September of 2020. Unfortunately, as mentioned earlier, it's been difficult to find sites that were taking students but I did end up securing placement at a site in Denver, Colorado through a personal connection. Denver is six hours from my home, so I had to be away from my family for two two-week rotations, one in September and one in October. Um, and Denver is not a, a city I'm very familiar with, so that was a challenge, of course. Um, because I was able or I was unable to start my rotations in in the summer term, I missed two two hundred hours of of clinical ambulatory hours during that term. And I really wanted to work hard to try to complete all of those hours in subsequent semesters with the hope of graduating on time. So when I was in Denver, I was attending clinical four days a week and class one day a week to log as many hours as possible. This was my fifth term, which um, Christy mentioned is a very challenging term. Um, I would agree it was probably my most challenging term to date. Um, so I was working very hard, having a lot of stress. Um, and then finally, when I was in Denver in October, my second rotation, I learned that my 71-year-old parents, who both live near me in South Dakota, both had COVID. Um, at this point, I felt very powerless, scared, and drained. And I felt like every bad thing that I had feared could happen with COVID was happening. Now my elderly parents had COVID. Thankfully, both of my parents did have mild courses and they recovered fine at home. But of course, there was no way for me to know that when they first became ill. In November of 2020, I was then able to secure a local placement for my clinicals. So I came back home and I entered my intrapartum birth rotations in January of 2021 while still working on completing lost hours from summer term. So consequently, since September, I've taken very, very little time off from studying or clinicals, which has been very difficult for my me and my family with my little kids. My husband does support us with his work and taking good care of the children while I have to be away, but I don't get to spend a lot of time with any of them, unfortunately, right now. Or during that time. 
Um, at my local clinical site, we do see a variety of high and low risk patients, and we catch babies at that local hospital. This is in a town of about 75,000 people. Our hospital initially restricted support people to one per patient because of COVID. And so patients were not able to have doulas or anyone other than just one partner or mother's mother, et cetera. This changed recently though, and patients can now have two support people. So we do see doulas again, along with partners and mothers of patients attending some of the births. Um, the hospital also previously required a COVID test for patients who were being induced or having planned C-section, but this requirement has recently been eliminated as well. I got fully vaccinated for COVID in February, and I've been feeling like now I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. I've also been able to finally make up all of the missed hours from summer term, so I'm on track to graduate as initially planned in August. And I'm so excited to finally become a midwife. So for everybody out there, happy International Day of the Midwife. Hello, everyone. My name is Raven Fulton. I'm also a student nurse midwife and soon to be graduate of Georgetown University. I live in Atlanta, Georgia in the United States. At the beginning of the COVID pandemic, I was already on leave from my midwifery program due to an issue with clinical placement. I had completed two semesters of clinical in the office setting and was scheduled to start my intrapartum rotation in the spring of 2020. But the affiliate agreement between Georgetown and the hospital I had been assigned to was not finalized. So I took a leave from the program in hopes that the agreement would be finalized by the summer. However, when the shutdowns in the United States began in March and I saw all of my classmates being pulled from their clinical sites that they had secured with no estimate of when return would be safe or allowed. In addition to the fact that my hospital site would not give me or the clinical placement team a timeline for completion of the affiliate agreement, I was afraid that I would not be able to finish the program anytime soon. I had been a staff nurse in the emergency room for six years prior to starting graduate school, and I maintained a PRN position in the emergency room after starting the program. So with the uncertainty of when I could return to clinical and the dramatically increased patient census and need for nurses at my job, I returned to work pulling full-time hours to assist my community in the fight against COVID as much as possible. Being on the very front line of the fight in the emergency room was physically, mentally, and emotionally challenging, and I was terrified of catching COVID and bringing it home to my family. But they understood my sacrifice, and we were all very meticulous with our hygiene practices and thankfully have not been affected. My husband was already working from home for several years prior to the pandemic, and my daughter was in eighth grade and able to navigate a computer and Zoom class sessions by herself. So even though we were all devastated by the loss of events and ex experiences very important to us, like me attending the annual meeting of the American College of Nurse Midwives in person, where I was scheduled to be a student volunteer and my daughter's softball season being canceled. Um, otherwise, the actual transition to quarantine living was somewhat smooth for our household. By the time the summer semester started in May, Georgetown had given the option, given us the option to continue the program with didactic only learning or take a leave while return to clinical was negotiated. And I strongly desired to get back into the learning environment because one leave felt like an eternity away from the content that I was desperate to get back to. The didactic portion of Georgetown's midwifery program had always been in an online format and therefore was easy to resume. However, the previously scheduled on-campus intensives where we would practice and be evaluated on clinical skills by faculty prior to our actual rotations was moved um, to the virtual environment. And I was heartbroken because some of the skills that we were to practice, I was completely unfamiliar with. I had been an ER nurse since graduating from my bachelor's program and I had no labor and delivery experience. So I was looking forward to practicing my hand maneuvers for birth, placing internal monitors, estimating blood loss, and suturing in the simulation environment with faculty there in person for guidance and correction as needed. And I initially did not see how that could be accomplished virtually. Our faculty, our faculty made their best effort to translate the in-person experience to a virtual one. 
And although we were unable to meet face to face, I still received great benefit from being able to talk through scenarios and procedures. I was finally able to return to clinical in October 2020. By that time, I had completed the intrapartum didactic course and started my final semester in integration. I was initially assigned to a hospital only eight miles from my home. However, although the midwife there agreed to precept me, the hospital system had a moratorium on student placements, which is actually still in effect today. So I was fortunate to find placement with another site that initially only agreed to host me for my intrapartum rotation, but thankfully kept me on to finish out integration. I was required to provide my own PPE for both the clinic and hospital settings for the entirety of both rotations, even for known COVID positive patients, but that was a compromise I was willing to make to finish out my clinical rotations. My preceptor had been a, has been a midwife for 18 years, and I was so nervous to work with her because I literally had not been on a labor and delivery floor since my women's health rotation in my bachelor's program but it turned out to be the best apprenticeship I could have hoped for. And I learned so much working alongside of her. I attended 50 births in the hospital setting, including twins and a VBAC. So there was ample opportunity for experiential learning and my preceptor did her best to seek out every one of those opportunities. She was more than invested in my success and I am eternally grateful for fate bringing us together. I recently completed my integration rotation, so I will finally be graduating this month. My initial graduation date at the start of the program was August 2020, and now it is May 2021. Overall, there were several blessings and lessons I learned from being a graduate midwifery student and ER nurse through a pandemic. One of the most important lessons I learned was the significant value of self-care in preparation for being the best, best version of oneself to care for others. Also, the importance of quality time with family and loved ones cannot be overstated. And finally, pushing through the many challenges to finish graduate school in a pandemic has renewed and strengthened my confidence and commitment to the profession of midwifery. Although my program was extended from 27 months to 35 months total, overcoming all the challenges has been the most rewarding journey and I feel even more passionate about midwifery and women's health than when I first started the program. I am more sure than ever that helping women through some of the most vulnerable times in their lives is my calling, and I am honored to share this space with you all. Thank you, and happy International Day of the Midwife. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining us today as we're sharing our student experiences in the midst of COVID. Um, my name is Lauren Ragney. I live in the United States in Columbus, Georgia, and I am also a women's health nurse practitioner and nurse midwife student at Georgetown University. Um, yesterday, I just started my final didactic semester here, so I am definitely looking forward to graduation, certification, and becoming a co-laborer, if you will, with this amazing community of midwives. Um, in light of the devastating effects of COVID on businesses, on families, communities, um, and of course the healthcare field, um, I consider myself to be very fortunate. Um, however, I can say with the utmost confidence that being a grad school student in the midst of a pandemic was never on my bucket list. Um, and like many of you, I did not see this coming. And um, when I first heard about COVID, um, I remember it had not reached the United States yet. Um, it was just something that was briefly mentioned on news stations and um, the newscasters seemed to be pretty nonchalant about it. And so I kind of adopted their sentiment. Um, I didn't think COVID would spread to the U.S. And if it did, I didn't think it would be that much of a problem. And I quickly found out that I was very, very wrong about that. Um, I remember when the first case came to the U.S. and then the first case came to Georgia, um, my nonchalant attitude and I received a very abrupt and unwelcomed wake-up call. Um, as um, Charlie said, Georgia has been quite the hot spot for COVID, um, and so cases started to spread like wildfire, and our hospitals were overflowing, and grocery stores were running dry, and statewide lockdowns were being issued, um, and I just felt this deep sense of fear um, come over me. And it may sound a little bit extreme, but with such little information that we had when the virus first started, I started to wonder if this would be the end of life as I knew it. Um, and it was very unnerving. 
Uh, when COVID first hit um, our country and my state, I was in the middle of another very rigorous semester at Georgetown. And thankfully, as the others have mentioned, our program is primarily online. So I didn't really have to do any adjustments on that front. Um, however, our on-campus intensives um, were moved to the online platform, as previously mentioned. And those times you know, where we are to practice and gain hands-on experience prior to clinical rotations, um, you know, we didn't get that face-to-face -face interaction and that, you know, personal hands-on experience. And for me, that just really affected my confidence level going into clinical. Um, and COVID also has put me pretty far behind in clinical rotations. Um, I've missed three so far, and I'm actually doubling up right now to prevent my graduation date from being delayed any more than it already has been. Um, I was anticipating graduating in August of this year, but at the absolute earliest, I will be graduating in December, um, if not later. As far as personal losses go, um, I have lost several family members and several family friends since March of 2020. Um, some of them were due to COVID and some of them were just because of other complications, but because of the restrictions and because of just you know, the sheer fear of contracting COVID, um, it felt like we weren't able to appropriately celebrate their life or grieve our losses um, for fear that we might you know, contract the virus in the process if we you know, did congregate and, and gather together. Um, however, one of the absolute scariest moments for me in this past year was when my dad started having what he thought was just really bad reflux. Um, it actually turned out to be a massive heart attack and we almost lost him. Um, the doctor said that um, the vessels on the left side of his heart were 99% blocked. Um, the right side was 70 to 80% blocked. And um, unfortunately, how everything happened, he wasn't able to be taken to the ER via ambulance. So we actually drove him there and had to drop him off at the front door. And for me, it was absolutely devastating, not knowing what was going on with him. I didn't know what would happen. And I knew that I couldn't go inside and be his advocate. Um, and I honestly didn't know if he was gonna walk back out those doors alive. Um, and so that was very, very devastating for me. Um, on a more minor scale, I feel like I've lost a lot of friendships um, during COVID. Um, as most of you know, grad school can be very isolating in and of itself. Um, a lot of people don't understand the complexity of grad school and how much time it takes to become a midwife. Um, but then also in the midst of a global crisis and the lockdown and social distancing, the outlets that I once had to kind of de-stress and cope with the stress of grad school, um, those things were taken away. But I did want to end on a positive note uh, because COVID did bring about some much needed blessings for me. Um, I am very, very close to my family, especially my mom. Um, and so even though lockdown was difficult and 2020 was very difficult, um, it gave me about a year's time to bond with my family in a way that I don't think I would have been able to in the pre-COVID world. Um, I recently moved this past weekend um, a couple hours away to do clinical rotations. And so um, that time to bond before I left was very, very special. Um, I also feel like without all of the external distractions, um, it gave me a little bit more time to focus on school and my dream of becoming a midwife one day. So thank you again for uh, being here and for listening to my story. And I just want to wish you all a happy International Day of the Midwife. Thank you so much to our student panelists for sharing their stories. They are powerful and poignant. I would like to ask uh, now for a minute of silence from everyone in remembrance for all those across the globe who have died or who are suffering from COVID and in tribute to the bravery of midwives everywhere who have continued to care for women and birthing people during the pandemic. Please take a deep breath now and send your healing thoughts out to the world as we begin our minute of silence.
sake. Thank you all for that moment of silence. And also for your kind attention during our presentation. Many thanks to Lorraine Mockford, always a um, fabulous facilitator, and to our student panelists. And I'm going to remind our students to be sure and note your presentation on your CV or resume. Very good professional activity to um, contribute to. We're now open for any comments or questions. Yes, I think we can, we have a few minutes to take some comments or questions. And thank you, Cindy and students, that was fantastic. I see Juliet is, uh, is typing something. And Claudia. I would like to um, raise the question uh, due to the conference theme uh, for you to consider. You don't have to answer now, but um, think about how has the pandemic influenced your understanding of birth inequities and your role in making positive change? A big question and something we can all reflect on. Juliet says, it was interesting to hear about deciding to uh, prior, prioritize midwifery training over working as a nurse at this time. Sometimes it's important to take the long view, even in a pandemic. Yes, very much agreed. Thank you, Juliet. We learned from the Ebola epidemic in West Africa that you know, losing a whole graduating class of healthcare providers is really devastating to the workforce and the ability then to care for people. Well, Lorraine, it looks like that's it. So I thank do you. believe. Thank you again, students, and uh, happy International Day of the Midwife to everyone. <laughs>